Me and the pals decided to go to Origins the other day. Welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. I am Kyle, and today I'm going to take you through my time at Origins, which is just in my backyard in Columbus, Ohio. I've been to Origins a few times. I feel like this was like my first real time at Origins because I got to experience pretty much everything. A lot of it had to do with the people I was with. But let's just run through it day by day. It's going to be a good time, I hope. I can't wait to share this with you because I had such a blast. Met some beautiful people, played some amazing games, found some new favorites, played some old favorites. So let's just get into it. Origins is a board game convention, if you didn't know. It's probably close to PAX, which I've never been to, but it's going to be somewhere between like Dice Tower and Gen Con, where there's a little bit of buying, there's a little bit of playing, there's a lot of good food, and it's just kind of the convention I want. And that's not just because it's in Columbus and it's in my backyard and it's a one I can drive to because I like buying games, but I really like playing them. And I like kind of that small feel of a convention where it's also kind of grandiose, like it's a big deal here in Columbus. So, so Thursday, I started out at a booth for Third World Studios and Third World Studios is not a publisher I was super familiar with at first, but they reached out and asked if I would like to meet and go over some of their games. And I was, there was one game that Jeff and Jamie was actually pretty interested in called Stuff of Legends. So I was like, oh, I'll go see if they're demoing that. I met with a guy, he was super duper nice, but they did not have uh, Stuff of Legends set up yet to demo. What they did have was this game called Mission Control Critical Orbit. And this is gonna be coming to crowdfunding later this year, or no, I don't know if it's crowdfunding. Don't quote me on that because he said he's hoping it's here by Gen Con, which is in August. But what Mission Control is, is I'm gonna say a lot of words people are gonna squeam at. Mission Control Critical Orbit is a real-time cooperative roll and write game. There are two things that a lot of people are going to be upset about right away. And that's real time and roll and write. And that's, if that goes with me, I'm not a huge roll and write fan. Real time. I've had some success with Project Elite's a pretty good game. This game really piqued my interest. One person is lost in space. Think Matt Damon in The Martian. The other players are in a space station. Think like Jessica Chastain or in The Martian. So you're pretty much playing The Martian. The player who's lost is doing is he's rolling the dice or she is rolling the dice. They have to communicate the dice they rolled. I rolled a two, a three, and a five. So it's up to the other players to say like, okay, I'm gonna take the two. And somebody can say like, I really need the five. And what those other players do is they have their own little puzzle. And like one player has like a Sudoku and another player has this like, these like bars that go up and they have like kind of like, it's like a ladder rank. Each player when they complete a line of their player board or complete their Sudoku square, whatever they need to do. Once they unlock one of their abilities, they can tell the person that's lost in space, like, hey, here's a pipe. Another person can be like, oh, great. Well, now you can move this communicator down to where that pipe is you just got. And so it's really just like each player has their own little puzzle, but they're working together to set up the player that's lost in space to get themselves out. The game is 20 minutes. You just set the clock and you go. And when he was explaining this, I was like, all this stuff sounds really interesting. I was like, what's the success rate? And he said it's pretty high. I don't know if he was just trying to talk it up a little bit and say like, it's pretty high. But at first I was like, there's a lot going on. You really have to be working together. It's something where it's like, I'm sure it's like super duper hard at first. And you're like, we're never going to win this. But like, once you get the player powers down and you understand what you're doing, you understand like not only what you need, but what other players need, maybe it would be a little bit more doable. A really cool game from Third World Studios. I hope it does. I hope they do well with that one. Max was coming up on Thursday night so like I went to the convention Thursday day but I was by myself so I didn't do a ton of demoing I kind of just did my shopping the first thing I bought was this trick-taking game Ghost of Christmas by BoardGameTables.com my favorite publisher name it's a trick-taking game where every round you're playing three separate tricks you're playing a trick in the past you're playing a trick in the present you're playing a trick in the future who wins the trick from the past will lead the trick in the present which will lead the trick in the future and you're trying to like manipulate how you play your cards. I mentioned in the Discord that I really, really love trick-taking games. And somebody was like, well, have you played Ghost of Christmas Past? And I was like, no, I haven't. And then, when I, so when I saw it there, it was like a cheap $15 game, but I did splurge because uh, I got the means playa. I splurged for the wooden uh, wreaths and the start player token, which is a Scrooge top hat. Super unnecessary, but I love trick-taking games and I love Christmas. I felt like this one would fit into my collection. I cannot wait to pull it out and I will pull it out before Christmas. You can trust me on that one. To break the thought that I'm only into beige Euro games, I went with a pretty Euro game. 
and that's Honey Buzz. I did the Kickstarter Deluxe All In. I don't know if I should have done that, um, but I guess worst case scenario is I don't really like it, and then I sell it. I think I will like it. It is super pretty. The Deluxe components are awesome. I did have to text Dolan and ask what some of the deluxe components were because it didn't say in the rule book. What Honey Buzz is, it's like a worker placement game. You're also like building out your own little honeycomb. And so it's got like kind of a tile placement puzzle because how you place your tiles is going to give you the certain actions you're going to do. And it's got kind of an economic feel to it. I read the rules to this last night. I watched the how to play or the watch it played um, from Rodney on this. So I cannot wait to get this one to the table. It should be pretty soon. That was my Thursday at Origins. Uh, then I came back to the house and I just waited for Max and Max got in pretty late. And he was like, hey, do you care of Kenny? Kenny, who is also in our Discord, he's a phenomenal painter. I'm sure you've seen his like Marvel United stuff. And he's been on Table Knots a few times with Max and Doolin. Great, great guy. He asked like, hey, can Kenny join us for games? I was like, yes, I would love to meet Kenny. And so he came over and we started a game pretty late at night. And I was like, what do you guys want to play? Do you guys want to keep it short? Do you want to keep it light? And they're like, no, let's play Brass Lancashire. So we started a game at Brass. Neither one of them have played before. And so I was like, all right, let's dive into one of my faves. Brass was a smash hit in my opinion. I mean, I'll always love it and I don't think Max and Kenny hated it. And it doesn't matter who won, right? Kenny beat me by three points. And me losing by a close margin is going to be a theme of the weekend, as uh, you'll see. Friday, we got to Origins right around open. And there, we demoed a game that we were all super excited about. We stopped at the Brother Wise Game Studio. They're put, releasing a new game that will be coming to crowdfunding soon. From John D. Clare, another Foster the Meeple favorite. We love John D. Clare. So John D. Clare and Brotherwise Games have teamed up to create this game called Empire's End. And what Empire's End is, it's a civilization game where your civilization is dying. It's the end of your empire. And it's kind of set up like John D. Clare's Space Base. Your empire has 12 different cards. There's like these this phase tracker. You just move the tracker every time you complete a phase. And most phases are called disasters. When a disaster happens, you're going to flip over a card and it's going to say, give you a number. And it's going to say like nine. So you count the ninth card from your front. And that card is going to burn to the ground if you don't win the bid. Also on that card, it not only does it have the number nine, but it's going to give you a resource like food. Okay, so everybody's got their a little fire token on nine to say this is about to burn down. And you just go around the table bidding food, food, food. You just keep placing on food on this card saying like, I don't want this. I don't want this. I can't have, I can't lose card nine. And finally, it gets back to you after so many times, so many people bidding foods and you're seeing there's 12 food on that. I'm passing. And so what you do is you get all the food that was bid on it. I took it. I just lost my ninth card. Part of my empire has burned, but I just collected 11 food. That's going to help me outbid the other players later in the game. And so this is the whole game is reverse bidding. It, it's really got some space space elements, but, and I, I like space space, but this just had so much more. It's more of a, a gamer's space space. I cannot wait for this. I think it was one of the games of the convention. I think it's going to be a smash hit. And John D. Clare, I mean, he has got to be put up there with some of the most prolific designers at this point. He is just keep coming after hit after hit after hit. Now we're going to get into me gushing a little bit, even more than I have been, because we stopped off at Ivy Studios and Ivy Studios is a fairly new publisher. They put out two games so far and they got another one coming. They put out Moonrakers first and then Veiled Fate just came out and it released. And we stopped by there and Max knew one of the owners of Ivy Studios, Austin, and he introduced me to Austin. And Austin is just a fantastic, fantastic person. And I was looking at their games. I was like, oh, all these games look like pretty, they look pretty cool because their production level is so top notch. It's unbelievable, their production. It's like when I first saw Stonemaier games, I was like, oh my gosh, board games can be made incredible looking. Max introduced me to Austin and Austin out of like, I was like, hey, I'm Kyle I'm with Foster the Meeple. And he was like, well, oh, do you want to cover Moonrakers? And I was like, I, will, I would love to check out Moonrakers. I've heard good things from Max. So thank you, Austin and Ivy Studios for that. That was just so nice. And it, it just kind of blew me away because I didn't go to Origins for that. I didn't go to Origins to schmooze and try to just get stuff for people. I was just going to check out games because I love games. And the fact that he did that unprompted was just a, a lovely gesture. They have these three games, one of them which has not yet been released. If you describe them to me, none of them are my style. Moonrakers is a deck building negotiation game. Negotiation has hit or misses because I think it's heavily group dependent and I always feel like it's kind of thrown in as like, uh, we need some player interaction. Let's just throw that in. Then you got Veiled Fate, which is uh, social deduction, which is another genre I don't really care for. And then Mythic Mischief is a two player skirmish abstract game, which is not up my alley at all. So there are three games. It's like, if you describe them to me, I would be like, oh, okay, they look cool. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to spoil this a little bit. Veiled Fate, Moonrakers, and Mythic Mischief are at least 9s out of 10 for me. I loved everything about them, and I'm going to get into why 
Now, we left Origins, we came back to our house to play some games. A couple of my buddies, uh, Chance and Chris, came up from Cincinnati to play some games with me too. And I was like, I really want to play Veiled Fate. And Veiled Fate is phenomenal. I think it does everything social deduction should do. Everybody gets to do something fun. Everybody gets to lie if they want to. Everybody gets to tell the truth if they want to. So in Veiled Fate, what you are is you're acting as a god who is trying to pass their godly duties to these demigods. And so everybody's assigned a card. On your card is a color of a demigod. What makes Veiled Fate special is on your turn, you're going to do two actions and you're going to move, you're usually going to move a demigod to an event or do a special player power or a special power that everybody has access to. You can play the whole game of Veiled Fate without ever touching your piece. So I was the teal demigod. The entire game, which was like a 90 minute game, they said I was red or black literally all 90 minutes. And so like, I just ran with it. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna keep touching these pieces. That was super fun that I was able to like kind of deceive them. In Veiled Fate, everybody's trying to deduce who everybody is to stop them. So like, if I don't figure out that Chris is purple and I don't figure out that Max is green, then how am I ever gonna stop them from scoring points? Just know that it's a social deduction game for the people who may not like social deduction games because everybody gets to do something fun. But after that, we played Moonrace. It was an IV Studios day, as I said. I was thrilled to get into Moonrakers, and Max had already played it before, so I was like, I didn't even have to read the rules. He could just teach it to us. And we had five players, and it plays well at five. One complaint about Moonrakers before I get into how Moonrakers plays is thought it was a little long, but that was a product of us as players, and I'll get into why now. So in Moonrakers, it's a deck builder. And on your turn, you're gonna say like, I'm gonna go on this mission. And then you're gonna ask people to come in with you. And you're gonna say, all right, I'm gonna do this mission. And I'll be like, uh, Chance, can you help me with attacks? And once you agree, then everybody has to play out these cards that meets the mission's requirement. So it could be like, you need three blues and two yellows and a green card played out. But the problem is like you can only, you only get to play one card. So that first card you play better be a blue card, which gives you more actions. And then you play another blue card, which gives you more actions. So you went from one actions to four actions, but you're negotiating on who's coming with you on the team. So it's like, I got this mission, I bring Chance and Max along. So let's negotiate what the rewards are. So like the mission can say like, okay, if you guys complete this correctly, there's one point on the line there are $7 on the line and there is uh, one card you can draw on the line. I was like, okay, you know what, Chance? You're taking the die which can damage you. So I'm gonna give you the point. Max, you have three of the dollars. I'll take four of the dollars, but I want the card. Max can be like, I want all the money if you're taking the card. Hmm. So you really have to think like, okay, you can have all the money. Chance, you can have the point. I'll take the card. Let's do this thing. The thing is like Max, could be like, screw you and not play anything. And then it would be down to me and Chance to, to complete the mission. Or Chance could say, screw you too, Kyle, do it on your own. And then I can't do it. And so I, I fail. Really where it slowed down is the negotiation part. And in the rule book, it does say like, if you and your friends are getting to the point where you're just like APing this and like constantly talking and constantly negotiating, a set a minute timer and we did have to implement that rule later in the game because it was getting on to be pretty long. It was a really fun game in there. And if you like negotiation and you like that table talk and you like that banter, it's gonna be there. Those games and IV Studio games in general are just gonna create these stand-up moments that are just gonna create super memories. And while they may not be the most like pristine games they were for me, they took genres I did not really care for and made them a blast and I cannot wait to play more of them. So we decided to play this game that Max picked up called Green Team Wins, which is a hot new party-ish game, I guess. And Green Team Wins, the goal is, everybody starts off on the orange team. The goal is to get to the green team, because when you're on a green team, you start scoring points. 15 rounds, and it's whoever scores the most points is the winner. What you do is you're gonna draw a card, and it's gonna say, be like a this or a that, or it's gonna be a multiple choice, or it's gonna be a fill in the blank. And it could be like, Let's say I pull a fill in the blank card and it's school blank. Everybody will write down one word that goes in that blank. And I could put like school yard and then chance maybe put school book. And whatever answer was said the most gets the points. They Everybody who answered the majority gets to flip over, be on the green team now. So it's just a really fun party game. And you know what? I think green team wins kills just one. Green team wins gives a lot of the same feelings as just one. It creates more conversation. It creates a more of a party atmosphere in terms of like uh, debating like, oh, why would you pick the Wolfman as your boyfriend over like Edward Cullen? Like it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Robert Pattinson, come on. Friday night, we played a five player game of Ankh. This was a planned game. This was the game that my friends came up for and it was insane. I love Ankh. I love the, the simple decisions become hard decisions. They become excruciating. I would play Ankh again at five, no question. So Saturday, something 
not board game related, I played disc golf for the first time with Max and my friend Chance and my friend Alan. We went off to a local course and that was a blast. I really, really like disc golf. Then we headed to the convention. So let's get back into board game stuff. Me and Max got the demo Mythic Mischief with Kenny. So I mentioned Mythic Mischief is kind of like a an abstract skirmish style game in lines with like your Funko verse matched. It's a skirmish game that you would think like is only two players, but we had three. Austin, the owner of IV Studios, like, no, it works at three, trust me. The Mythic Mischief is a game about high school cliques, but they are all like mythical creatures. So like I played as the Frankenstein jocks. Max was like zombie cheerleaders or witch cheerleaders. Kenny was the zombie skaters. That's what it was. I think what sets this game apart is that you have this like player board and your player board has stats on it, which is really cool. And so where your stats are set at is what you can do. So like at the beginning, you can do one move and then you can do one of your special powers or you can move a wall, which is really cool that you can manipulate the map. So me and Max were working together and we're, you're trying to set up the other player to be captured by this tome keeper. Think of it like a principal trying to catch a kid out in the hall without a hall pass. Every time you have your opponent get caught by that tome keeper, you get a point and it's going to be first to 10 points. And this game, this design is just really, really smart, especially with three players. I loved it at three. We were given an awesome teach by this guy named Angelo. He kind of just like opened my eyes to what the game could be because at first i was like okay this is just like a normal skirmish game yeah you're manipulating the map you're manipulating the pieces but like when you combine it with the special abilities of like moving the walls and you're combining it with the with your faction's ability which only they can do it gets to be really smart we got down to the last round and it was going to be either me and max were going to have to pull out this miraculous move or kenny was going to win on his next turn we did it we pulled it off and like it was so funny as we were like mathing out our head, like Austin like pulled Angelo off to the side and was like, do they know this rule? And, and we we thought about it like right then. And it was a stand up moment that we were able to get to the 10th point while Kenny was sitting at nine. Max jumped up and cheered. He like was high fiving everybody. Kenny was like gave us like a, a nice little round of applause for figuring it out. I don't think Mythic Mischief was my favorite of the IV Studio games. I still think it's Veiled Fate, but Mythic Mischief gave just a, an amazing experience that like I will literally never forget that it made my origins. That game is an instant buy when it comes out in August for me. Just to finish off the rest of my haul here, I mentioned that uh, Moonrakers was uh, given to me by IV Studio, so thank you again. So I went ahead and bought my copy and this was so funny. It was like the whole time I was like kept going up to Austin like, hey, are you, do you think you're going to sell out of Veiled Fate? And he's like, oh, we got about we got a few copies and I was like, okay, it's like, cause I want to buy it. I want to buy Veiled Fate from you. <laughs> that is the end of my buying at Origins. So two IV games, a trick taking game and Honey Buzz. Uh, I think that was a uh, rousing success. The rest of Saturday, me and Max were looking to demo uh, a few more games. I think we were both interested in this game called Decorum. Decorum is kind of like a cooperative deduction game, which sounded pretty neat, where you're trying to arrange a house. You're going to have three clues on your card. Uh, your partner is going to have clues on their card, and you guys need to puzzle it out to where all of your clues fit within 30 turns. And after you did your one simple action, your partner would say something like, that room looks like garbage or that pleases me. The puzzling out was kind of fun. I like deduction style games like Cryptid and stuff like that, but the problem with Decorum, it was very, very easy. Max and I figured it out around turn 14 of 30 and there was no real angst. And when you're done placing a piece, and somebody says, I don't like that, then you just know, okay, then like, because you only took one action, like it's very clear what they don't like about it. The other thing that I think makes it a little too simple is that you have these things called heart to hearts and they happen after turn or after turn like 15, 20 and 25. And what you do when you have a heart to heart is you just read a clue straight off your card. So you just tell the person like what one of your things is, which cuts the puzzle down from three clues each to two clues each. So I was a little disappointed by decorum. Now, to be fair, I do think we played the intro scenario. So that could have something to do with it. And the puzzle was fun. This would be a great game for couples. Then Max taught me Disney's Sorcerer Arena. Jeff and Jamie have already done a done well do better on this. So please check out that video. Disney Sorcerer Arena is a tough one for me to rank. The three characters I had, I just we just kind of picked on who we liked. And I picked Moana, my cat's namesake. I picked Sully. I picked Mickey Mouse. And they didn't really mesh together well, which is fine. It was just a demo game. And I was just seeing how the game worked. We did play through the whole thing. Max rocked me. It's not my favorite game. It's not one I'm going to seek out. Obviously, the theme is great. If you love Disney and you like those style of games, 
definitely it's all for you I max introduced me to somebody named Devin. Devin is from has his own youtube channel his channel is called Devin talks tabletops Devin was super cool he's an a plus dude and it wasn't just from this one time meeting him where i met him for five minutes i'm like oh this dude rules no we went to dinner and i got to know Devin a little bit more and we talked about our favorite games and we played this uh little trivia game that max got called list off this little it was a fun little trivia game it was, it was just a neat little trivia game if you like trivia and you like listing stuff and you have like base knowledge of like disney characters or like some sports and some movies you'll be fine i think you would like it so the reason max introduced me to Devin is because Devin ended up coming over to our house because he's going to teach us this game called forbidden stars which is in the top 100 or it was as of uh january 2020 but it's a warhammer themed game and they teamed up with fantasy flight to make this game called Forbidden Stars, and Forbidden Stars is a, a 4X game set in the Warhammer universe. Kind of similar bones to TI. In Forbidden Stars, you have three objective points out on the map. Your goal, go get those objective points. Devin taught us, it's Devin's favorite game of all time. It has these like little bars that cut off parts of the map, and every round you play a card that warps one of them and every player warps one of them a certain way so you can have your ships completely cut off for a round which sucks or you can keep somebody from getting to their objective which is awesome it's a game that i liked enough that if i ever find a copy for it i'll probably pick it up i, I really want to explore it more that game did last a long time and we ended about 2 30 in the morning us being the geniuses we are decided to wake up at 6 30 to play disc golf again because Devin really wanted to play disc golf but he had to be back at uh origins at nine o'clock because he was working the lucky duck booth and you know what three hours of sleep i don't regret that at all that was, that was such a fun morning and disc golf was great my time with Devin was super fun thank you so much Devin, for teaching us forbidden stars check out his youtube channel Devin talks tabletops another highlight of my weekend amongst many the rest of sunday me and max were just kind of burnt out at origins we had already kind of seen all the booze we've talked to everybody we wanted to talk to came back to my house played a couple more games before max left we played glenmore to, which max has but hadn't played yet so he wanted me to teach it to him and we knocked that game out in like 45 minutes it was like candy land to him the dude was a freak at glenmore how fast he was going and the, the hell of it is he beat me by one and then we played a game max picked up on a whim and it's called dice miner and dice miner was actually pretty great it has this like weird little mountain stand that was completely unnecessary that you dump dice onto and so the dice build up a mountain like you literally have a mountain of dice and you're drafting dice off of the top parts of the mountain, which is very fun. It's just a fun little drafting game, a game that kind of reminds me of like Azul, a game that I was pleasantly surprised by. Max meet me by one again. Then Max had to leave. So sad. Max, I love you, buddy. I'm so glad you got to come up. Origins would not have been the same without you, bub. I was there representing Foster the Meeple. I had to come out of my shell a little bit and you helped me do that. You introduced me to so many people. So much love to Max and Table Knots. So that was my Origins weekend. And Sunday night I was exhausted and I thought, I'm going to kind of take it easy. I'm just going to watch a movie, probably go to bed early. And then my friend Alan was like, hey man, do you want to play Star Wars Rebellion? So I played Star Wars Rebellion <laughs> that night. If somebody's going to text me to play a game, I'm going to play a game. Text me right now. I'll come over. I don't care. But that was my Origins weekend. I cannot express my gratitude to Jeff and Jamie with Foster the Meeple. Without you guys, I would have still gone to Origins, but it would not have been what it was. I was able to meet some publishers. I was able to meet some fans of the channel. Like every time I said, I'm Kyle King, I'm with Foster the Meeple, people would say like, you got, you're with Foster the Meeple? I love those, I love Jeff and Jamie. And so like, you guys give me some cachet at these conventions. I love you guys both. Really wish you could have been here to enjoy it. One of my highlights of my board gaming career. There was somebody that's from our Discord that recognized me and Max, even in our masks. Uh, her name was Jana, and she talked to us for 15 minutes. What a phenomenal human. So it was just really cool meeting people, meeting the publishers, meeting people that were fans of the channel, and seeing people that were like, affected by Jeff and Jamie's videos in, in a positive way. It just like warms my heart to be a part of this, kind of sparked more joy, more joy than I thought was possible. Being part of this channel, getting to see a convention from this side of things was just so much fun. Last but not least, I need to thank my wife, Megan, who was actually in Florida on vacation with my two girls. She was like, why don't you go back a week early? The fact that she was willing to let me do that, to come back and represent the channel at Origins, it's gonna be kind of teary-eyed actually. She's just a phenomenal woman. I love her to death. She was able to wrangle our two toddlers in Florida and on the flight back. I don't know if she'll watch this video. I don't think she watches my videos, but I want everybody to know that I'm married to a beautiful, phenomenal woman. 
If you're interested in buying board games such as Moonrakers or Veiled Fate, if you can find them at your local friendly local game store, I suggest you do that first. For me here in Columbus, that is the Guard Tower on Treview, a great, great store. If you're ever up in Halifax, check out the Boardroom Game Cafe on Barrington. If you like this video, if you want to hear more about Origins, come to the Discord, like and subscribe, all that stuff. You know what to do. Have a good one. Uh, stay sweet. So they can say I rolled a five and a six and a seven. It's a seven. And then finally on Saturday, we played Ankh, or this is Friday. All right, let's get back into it. Oh, my iPad locked up, dummy. And I picked uh, Disney, or uh, Disney. That one movie where he wears the hat, where the broomsticks that do the stuff. Uh, big, the dude from Big Daddy, uh, Fantasia.